Yo guys, what is going on? JPS back with another video. And today we're going to be reacting to top 10 British phrases that always confuse the rest of the world. Now this should be an interesting video to watch considering I've heard a lot of these phrases in real life. Uh, just on the street, someone's passing by or whatever the case may be just from that trip to the UK. Um, but also throughout the videos I've watched. So I'm curious to see what phrases still confuse me. I'm sure there are some, no doubt. But yeah, let's get right into this. Make sure you guys hit that like button, hit subscribe, consider joining the Patreon. It's the first link in the description. Right now we're watching four different shows and we watch a movie, a British movie, every Friday night. So if you're interested, first link in the description. Let's do it. Don't you remember the Crimbo Din Din we had with the Grotty Scotch Bin? Oh, the one that was all sixes and sevens. Yeah, it is, yeah, she was a traveling striper, but the Morris dancer lived up the apples and pears. Let's not waffle on and over egg the pudding. I had no idea what they said. Here for donkey's years. So, welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 British phrases that will always confuse the rest of the world. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Hey, hit that bell, guys. For this list, we're celebrating some bog standard bits and bobs of British English. But there's a spanner in the works because these sayings make no sense to anyone else. Spare me the confused innocence, Jane. We're both far too long in the tooth. Number 10, Bob's your uncle. This will go in here and. Bob's your uncle, abracadabra, is this your card? I see what context it's used in, but I don't no. even know what it is. Even if Bob really is your uncle, what's he got to do with anything? Yeah. <laughs> a saying said whenever a plan is executed, non-Brits might feel more familiar with the similar and Americanized idiom, hey presto, or the French phrase, et voila. Some linguists trace Bob's your uncle back to Arthur Balfour, who succeeded his uncle, Lord Salisbury, as Prime Minister in 1902. Balfour's critics claimed he only got the job thanks to his familial connections. Bob's your uncle. Okay. Number nine, a car boot don't, sale. Damn, they had it at Faulty the Towers. Boot, baby. Love hey, we watch Faulty Towers on Patreon. I love that show. Okay. Number nine, a car boot sale. Love a car boot, baby. Love a car boot. While boot sales are a kind of cultural institution in the UK, this term can bewilder anyone not born in Blighty. First off, the car boot itself causes confusion, given that American English calls a car's storage space its trunk. Yeah. But then, there's the actual concept itself, which makes a stateside garage sale seem very small fry. That is 182 <laughs> bottles of body lotion. <laughs> I was going to sell them at a car boot sale. Driving for miles to show off your secondhand stuff on a fold up decorating table, and somehow selling Delia Smith's Christmas cookbook from 1997 for £2.50, it's all brilliantly British. Well, Christmas time is party time. Number eight, a good old chin wag. No good stood round here chin wagging. Human race, you gossip all day. Enjoyed by friends over a coffee, a pint, or on the walk home from work. This basic Britishism breathes new life into any conversation. With satisfying literalness, the term triggers we that on Patreon who hasn't heard it before Everything, to imagine man. chins rising, falling, and flailing around like an excitable dog's tail. Of course, given that a good old chinwag is the same as an overdue gossip, the mental image of mouths speaking quickly isn't too far away. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Number seven, have a butcher's. And so, I haven't heard of any of these so far. What the heck? We've come to Cockney rhyming slang. East End, you say? I wonder what it's like these days. So much of British English is born out of London colloquialisms, but if you aren't well versed, then you can quickly struggle. You might say you Hank Marvin if you're hungry because you're starving, or you'll refer to someone you like as your old China, as in China plate, as in mate, as in friend. But to have a butcher's is one of the most widely used phrases in London and elsewhere, and it simply means to have a look. Butcher's hook, look, see, it's simple. See what we've got. Let's have a butcher's, eh? Number six, chuffed two bits. I played five eggs this morning. Five! I'll chuffed with that of us. It sounds very painful, but it's actually quite pleasant. In today's lingo, at least. We Brits describe ourselves as chuffed whenever something has gone exceptionally chuffed. well, like A star exam results or a favourable football score. I've never heard of it either. <laughs> However, the etymology of chuff includes it being used as a 16th century adjective 
for an overweight person and <laughs> as an alternative noun for someone's bottom or their genitalia. If something's up the chuff, it's in a bad way. So, Ugh. the chuff to bits now means excessive bad. happiness is quite a considerable leap. So I'm happy about that. Yes. Chuff. Number five, what a plonker. What a plonker. A phrase made famous by Del Boy, usually at Rodney's expense, Plonker fronts a family-friendly set of soft British insults, all designed to deride someone for their stupidity, but usually in a playful way. You Plonka! <laughs> as well as the only fool's favourite, there's Pillock, Pratt, Nitwit and Numpty, while you might also salute someone's waning intelligence by saying they're a few sandwiches short of a picnic. Only in Britain does it make sense to match a person's mental prowess with what they might be having for lunch. No, I will say, I've heard some very creative and innovative curse words from my reviewing of British shows. Like, there there are things that you just, like, you know it's a curse word. I could have no idea what someone just said, but I know just by the way it was, like, enunciated. Pronounced. Number four, spend a penny. To a traditional euphemism which sometimes confuses even British folk below a certain age, to spend a penny is to use the toilet. What? You to spend a penny what? <laughs> the term dates back to the mid 1800s when coin operated locks were fitted onto lots of public loos, so there really was a charge if you needed to relieve yourself. A century or so later, and the cost of visiting the toilet had skyrocketed to 10 or 20 pence. But the saying stuck around simply as a polite, indirect way of letting others know what you were up to. Excuse me, Bruce, I have to spend a penny. Go for your life, pal, don't fall in. Number three, <laughs> sod's law. Given that one meaning of sod has the word relating to grass or turf, it can be tricky to see how sod's law started. Why is it disposed? You keep on seeing me. Sod's law? It's often compared to Murphy's Law in America, though Sod's Law is slightly more severe. You could call it the exact opposite to a win-win situation. Red traffic lights when you're running extremely late, that's Sod's Law. Staying in for a delivery oh, but okay. missing it because you took a shower, that too. Booking a beach holiday but getting rain all week, good god it's annoying. I could puke. <laughs> Number two, on the pull. A close cousin We've all had those type of days where Saw's Law is very much in effect. It's just, you guys know, like, there's just that day where everything is going wrong. It happens. But then there's a lot more days, I feel like, where everything's going right. So. To what Americans call Makes hooking up, up or getting lucky, head to the city center on a Saturday night and you'll soon catch on. <laughs> Whether someone's on the pull, no. they're pulling at that precise moment, or perhaps they've just been pulled by someone else, it all relates oh. to the purposeful pursuit of romantic or sexual relationships. You want my advice? Yeah, on a go pull. where the sex is. It's exactly what I was thinking. And British slang terms for the various stages of pulling are pretty plentiful too. <laughs> to chat up is to talk to, to snog is to make out with, and you can consult Austin Powers for the rest. Very shagadelic, baby, yeah! yeah. <laughs> We've Number all heard one, that. Swings and roundabouts. An everyday idiom across the UK, today's winner roughly equates to nothing gained and nothing lost. And I promise I will try my absolute hardest to bring your loved ones back to you, dead or alive. Said whenever the pros and cons of a given situation seem to cancel each other out, the origins of the phrase are largely unknown, although most researchers agree on the obvious links to the children's playground, with both playtime options promising equal levels of fun. You might even favour the slide, but it swings in roundabouts, really. Well, that may or may not be true. Well, it is true. Well, it may or it may not be true. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips. Okay. So I have a confession. For the most part, I, I know what boot means. Boot, I actually didn't know until I got in there. Um, and then we got a ride from Ed, and he mentioned the car boot, and I was like, what's a boot? And that's where I learned. But these, the rest of these, so literally boot was the only one I knew out of all 10 of those. So pretty crazy. I will say I probably would have been, been able to guess for some of them, but some of them were just not related to what I thought they were, so... Anyways, you learn something new every day. That's something I definitely live by at this point because um, I'm learning a lot through these videos. But, 
yeah, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you have any other videos for me to check out, make sure you drop them in the comment section down below. Hit that like button, hit subscribe, guys, and I'm going to catch you all in the next video. Peace.